Hey there, friends, family, and loved ones all. Just when you think it can't get any creepier, let me introduce you to Utility Fog. It's being combined with Smart Dust, Utility Fog, and Virtual People, the future of programmable matter. And I'm going to read from this article as I play this video for you so you get an idea of what the heck we're talking about here. All right, so imagine... Billions of tiny robots, no longer than a grain of dust, working together as a swarm controlled by a computer. Um, back in 93, visions of molecular nanotechnology popularized. Instead of seeing nanotech as a collection of miniature, miniature factories building complex products, they envisioned computer-controlled swarms of them working together to simulate macro-scale objects on demand. Each robot has 12 arms, and by holding hands with neighbors, it can form a solid liquid or fog, a microchemical shape shifter, if you will. Anything you can visualize a computer can be simulated in real life, including people, including people, buildings, furniture, machines. It lets you create, change, or destroy nearly anything you want at will in seconds. The fog acts as a continuous bridge between actual physical reality and virtual reality. The fog is a universal effector as well as a universal sensor. Any, quote, real object in the fog environment can be manipulated. Any real object, humans, in the fog environment, chem fog, can be manipulated with this extremely wide array of patterns, pressure, force, and support, measured and analyzed, weighed, cut, reassembled, or reduced to bacteria-sized pieces, and sorted for recycling. As well as forming an extension of the senses and the muscles of individual people, the fog can act as a generalized infrastructure society at large. Fog city, new term. Hey, living in fog city. Need to have no permanent buildings of concrete, no roads of asphalt, no cars or trucks or buses. It can look like a park or a forest if the population is sufficiently whimsical, ancient Rome one day, and Emerald City the next. How fun can that be, folks? If utility fog is the destination, um, then smart dust is how we get there. Smart dust is another swarm of technology utilizing millions, perhaps even billions, of sensor-packed micro-electro-mechanical systems, or MEMS, mean MEMS, to collect, process, store, and transmit data about the environment around them. Uh, these miniaturized devices have sensors, cameras, and communication mechanisms to transmit the data they collect back to the base in order to process. The potential of smart dust to collect information about anyone, any environment, in incredible detail, could impact plenty of things of varieties from safety to compliance to compliance to compliance to productivity. It's like multiplying the Internet of Technology millions or billions of times over. Greed America is going with them, such as General Electric is doing, Cargill, IBM, Cisco Systems, all developing smart dust research, smart for them, dumb for us, extending the original defense industry concept is created in 91 by the RAND and DARPA, our enemy agencies. So back in 2016, UC Berserkly demonstrated the first implantable ultrasonic neural dust sensor, which can monitor and simulate the nervous system from within the body, helping to treat disease or create disease, and monitoring electric impulses. You do not move unless we allow you to move in the body to provide detailed information on the subject's conditions at all times, live, real time. All right, the merger and man and machine can happen another way as well by combining virtual telepresence. Another buzzword for you folks, virtual telepresence technologies with nanotech utility fog. Let's call it NUV, N-U-F, NUF, enough, yeah, nanotech utility fog, enough. It might be possible to project their consciousness remotely, possible to project their, project their consciousness remotely. Imagine a hyper-realistic simulation of another place where utility fog allows you to see, hear, and experience remote events by interacting with your body locally and allows you to interact with the remote environment through distant artificial body made of utility fog. I want to talk escapism. In this scenario, your mind and body will remain at home, but your experience and interact with the world in another location using utility fog as a communication bridge. Such technology might eliminate the need for business travel. <laughs> Stay at your homes, folks. 15 minutes, cities are coming. Effectively allow in person to teleport to any location. Telepresence, I'm here. Attending a meeting in China in seconds, and you can be back home and let the astronauts work remotely as virtual people. What do you think they're doing now? What if you don't have a real body? For decades now, transhumanists 
Ray Kurzweil, uh, have been dreaming about uploading their mind to a machine when their biological body dies. And please watch the movie Upload. These people would then be the ultimate ghosts in the machine, living as people via the brain, emotion, but without bodies. But Utility Fog gives these virtual people bodies again, allowing them to project their consciousness to the machine back to the world, real world, letting them interact with the world as human beings and potentially even live, quote, normal lives. Utopia. And if you haven't seen the movie Utopia, Utopia. you should, because it's all about the you know what's. And so they come up with this utopia, this alternative, where they can go to be other people, and they can live other lives. And this is what they're talking about, the utility fog. And this is 2016, but they've been at this a lot longer. You see Berkeley, first dust-sized wireless sensors implanted into the body, or smart dust, bringing close to the day when a Fitbit-like device could monitor, control your internal nerves, muscles, or organs in real time. We'll just turn your chip off, Aaron Russo. Freedom to fascism. We're quoting David Rockefeller. If you don't like it, we'll just turn your chip off. So long they plan, folks. Decades and decades. A decade to them is one day to us. Because the batterly, batterly, batterless sensors could also be used to stimulate nerves and muscles, the connection opens the door to electroceuticals, new term, to treat disorders, disordered, stimulate the immune system, or tamp down inflation, or control the mind. So the so-called neural dust, which the team implanted in the muscles and peripheral nerves of rats, we're in a rat race, what are we, we're rats, is unique that the ultrasound is used to both power and read out the measurements. Turn off the power, turn off the person. Ultrasound technology is already well developed for hospital use and ultrasound vibrations nearly anywhere in the body, unlike radio waves. I think the long-term prospects for neural dust are not only within the nerves of the brain, but much broader. Having access in body, in body telemetry, this is your telemedicine doctor, has never been possible because there's no way to put something super tiny, super deep. But now I can take a speck of nothing and park it next to a nerve or organ or your GI tract or muscle, and I can read out the data. And here you can see a sensor. This is three millimeters long and one by millimeter across. And you can see the computer chip right there, folks. Um, they've already shrunk it to one millimeter cube, about the size of a large grain of sand. They contain piezoelectrical crystal that converts ultrasound vibrations from outside the body into electricity to power a tiny onboard transistor that is in contact with a nerve or muscle fiber. A voltage spike in the fiber alters the circuit and the vibration of the crystal which changes the, the echo detected by the ultrasound receiver, typically the same device that generates vibrations. So they powered up this passive sensor's 100 microseconds with six 540 nanosecond, nanosecond ultrasound por, pulses, which gave them a continual readout. Three millimeters long, one millimeter high. Um, while the experience involved the peripheral nervous system and muscles, the neurodesk motes could work equally well in the central nervous system and brain to control you. All right, so this is the piezoelectronics, and that, look at the size of this, folks. And this is what they're spraying in the skies, and they're going through the blood-brain barrier. They don't need to inject it. It's already happening. And here you can see the piezoelectronics and how it works. So here's a map I wanted to show you. Claytronics and smart dust are just getting started. Um... So they're telling you, oh, it's going to be a while. We always know they're using it if they're telling us about it. They're already doing it. So the idea is claytronics and smart dust, a fog of nanoscale that sense and transmit data and change shape, shape shifting, termed polymorphic smart materials, TPSM. These foglets would be consistency of falling snow. What's happening here in California on the coast? We're having falling snow, uh, invisible except when they weren't, and transformable at will. And I've never seen snow like this. It tastes terrible. You melt it down. There's some stuff in there. There's some metal in there. If you take the snow and melt it down, you can see the stuff in there, folks. This is what they're doing right now. So this is less than two years, two to five years kind of symbology. But let's follow it. The smart dust comes in. We've had these for two decades. Uh, artificial intelligence, 4D printing, we've heard that. Deep reinforcement learning, neuromorphic hardware, neuro mind. Human augmentation, changing humans, 5G right here. 
digital twin, so they're making a twin of you. Con quantum computing, volumetric displays, brain-computer interface, controlling your mind, smart workspace, smart workspace, uh, smart robots, IoT platform. Remember, they said this is way beyond IoT. Virtual assistants, connected home, you know, deep learning, machine learning, nanotube, blockchain. Here we are, right here, blockchain. That's what they're going to be introducing next, blockchain. So this is where we are, and then it's going to go down to augmented reality with the with the slope of enlightenment, slope of enlightenment called virtual reality. Oh, really? Sick fucks. As Human Paragon reports, quote, if you had control over utility fog, you could make objects appear and disappear at will. You can make just about anything appear out of seemingly thin air. The fogs let you pass without an issue, so you can be surrounded by it. Total control of humanity, folks. Shaping up to change life as we know it. Not life. Sin life. It's synthetic world. Sin biology. Everything's going synthetic. Our food, our water, our air, and humans. Sin bio. All right, I'm going to finish up by reading from Way Kurtzwell stuff. The stuff that dreams are made of. Remember, he wants to live forever. So, um... You can change the robots, could shift around a little, and you'd have an elegant Queen Anne piece. You can create whatever you want, how cool. How cool. they got these little antenna arms. So rather than paint the walls, coat them with the utility fog, and they can be a different color every day in floor to ceiling. Notice how they're just letting you trip out. It's about tripping out, so you don't have to deal with any real world. So you can make the floor hardwood that feels like foam rubber. Um, you can get a utility fog for your car, too. You can have a new one every day. Oh, cool. Isn't that cool? You already have to be able to talk. Uh, you'll never, uh, you'll never get in a, co in a um, car collision because they already have the ability in these cars to talk to each other and coordinate actions in a sophisticated way. You can simply cover the road with a thick layer of robots, and your car calls ahead, makes a reservation for every position in time and space it will occupy during the trip. As long as you're on the roads, the fog will as well make it thick enough to hold the cars up as they cross intersections at different levels. Well, they're getting rid of cars, so this is all irrelevant. But now your car is no longer specific. These are the movies, um, RoboCop and these others are showing the cars flying around in the air. This is what they're talking about. The appearance of the car at this point is arbitrary. Even if dispensed with the all-road fog, you appear to fly along unsupported. <laughs> if, if you filled your house in a fog this way, you know, furniture no longer need to be extruded from the floor. It can obtain instantly. What's more, your surroundings can take the appearance or feel of any other environment they can communicate with. You set your both houses identical pattern, then a fog replica of him appears in your house, and one of you appears in his. The air fog around you can measure your actions, so your simulacrum, sim, I know how to say this, simulacrum copies them exactly. So they're cloning, folks. Each fog has 12 arms arranged in the faces of a dodecahedron, and the central body of the fog that is roughly spherical, 10 microns in diameter, 5 micro. this is, Beyond tiny, folks, it's the size they're talking about. They're talking about each fog, 100, approximately 100 micron spheres will contain about 20 micrograms or 5 quadrillion atoms. And will have the precision of about a micron. Massive power created here, folks. And massive strength, the tensile strength. They're using graphene oxide as well. Um, the, autom the atomically precise crystals of the foglet structure have a tensile strength of 1. 100,000 pounds per square inch. That's huge. As an open lattice, the fog gets the pocket only occupy about 3% of the volume they encompass. When locked in place, it has a more or less anisotropic tensile strength of 1,000 PSI. An appropriate mass of utility fog can be programmed to simulate most of the physical properties of any macroscopic object, including air and water. Let me read that again. Programmed to simulate air and water. An appropriate mass of utility fog, chem fog, chem snow, chem aircraft, and including air and water, the same precision these properties are measured by human senses. Major exceptions are taste, smell, and transparency. Transparency the latter can be overcome with a holographic iPhones if a person is, be, is to be completely embedded in fog. So there's your introduction to chem utility fog. We should be calling it utilisuticals. Fogaceutical, utility fogaceuticals. Here we go. Uh, chem fog, chem fogaceuticals. Anyway, stripping, cloud, microscopic, collision, exerting, amusement, nostalgic, uh, enabling, replace, 
uh, fiction. Uh, all of these things are part of the game. But just remember this quote here, folks. If you had control of utility fog, you can make objects appear and disappear at will. You can make just about anything appear out of seemingly thin air. The fog can let you pass without an issue, so you can be surrounded by it. This is the total control of humanity. Mind, body, and spirit. This is what they're planning to do. Arthur C. Clarke wasn't science fiction, it was predictive programming. So we need to be awake, we need to be aware that this is going on. And um, I don't know what to do about it other than to get our bodies in as good a shape as possible, but to become aware of it as well as this is their ability to change the minds of people. So when people are starting to act crazy or doing weird things, you can understand what's happening now. And this is the chem fog they're laying out out here in the West all over, and I'm getting reports that they're all over the country and Europe as well. They're doing the same kind of low-level chem fogs that just lay on the ground, and it's like very hard to see. Um, it's like being in China, you can't see very far. Anyway, just wanted to share this fun and exciting news with you. Ah, oh, what a crazy world we live in. Smart, smart dust, claytronics, and utility fog, your new buzzwords. Peace out, folks. Love one another. It's going to get tough, but stay strong. Love one another. Always.